On the island of Sumatra in Indonesia, there exists a large picturesque lake with a sinister history. The lake is the direct result of the largest volcanic eruption experienced by our species. 74,000 years ago, as our species was exploring our vast world, a volcano would erupt. The blast obliterated everything in northern Sumatra and the volcanic ash would blanket much of the world. The eruption of the Toba supervolcano certainly had drastic effects on the prehistoric world that we are still attempting to understand. The Toba caldera complex consists of four overlapping calderas. The youngest, dating to 74,000 years ago, is the largest of the four. The crater measures 30 kilometers wide and 100 kilometers long, large enough to be seen from space. It contains the steep-walled Lake Toba, the largest volcanic lake on the planet. Toba is still active to this day and is one of seven active supervolcanoes. A supervolcano is a volcanic center that has had an eruption of magnitude 8 on the Volcano Explosivity Index. A magnitude 8 supervolcano erupts more than a thousand cubic kilometers of material. For comparison, Mount St. Helens erupted with 0.25 cubic kilometers of material. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo in 1991 was the largest volcano to erupt in the last 100 years and expelled 5 cubic kilometers of material. The largest eruption of the Yellowstone caldera expelled 2,400 kilometers of material. Toba tops them all at an estimated 2,800 cubic kilometers of material, though some estimates suggest much more material was displaced. Fortunately, it will probably be another 600,000 years until it erupts next. Let's take a break from the video to talk about today's sponsor, Speakly. Speakly is a language learning app created specifically to teach you relevant knowledge for real-life speaking situations. As some of you may know, I have been learning Italian online for many months now. However, many of the apps available teach you near useless information and phrases. After 8 months of learning languages online, I feel like these apps did not provide me with enough resources to succeed. Speakly, on the other hand, offers everything you need to learn a language. You'll learn new vocabulary, you'll have speaking exercises, writing exercises, listening comprehension exercises, and even music recommendations, which is personally my favorite. This means that your studies never get boring and monotonous, because there's so many different ways to learn. Another aspect about the app that I like is that it actually lets you choose how you want to study. At home, it is nice to speak each word while learning, but while in public, I choose lessons with a focus on writing. Due to Speakly's unique approach to language learning, research has shown that their methodology helps you learn languages five times faster. 30 minutes of practice a day can get you conversation skills in around three to four months. Speakly is available on both web and mobile devices. Personally, the mobile app is the best in my opinion. Try free for seven days and get a 60% discount if you join the annual subscription. Huge shout out to Speakly for sponsoring the channel and I hope you guys all learn some new languages. Anyways, let's get back to the video. Now that we have an understanding of how truly massive this eruption was, let's talk about its effect on the prehistoric world. It goes without saying that anything in the immediate area would have been pulverized. Lava is not actually all that dangerous in most volcanic eruptions. It's the pyroclastic flow. Pyroclastic flow is a fast-moving current of hot gas and volcanic material collectively known as tephra. On average, they move at speeds of 100 km per hour or 62 miles per hour, though some are much faster and can reach up to 700 km per hour or 430 miles per hour. The gases and volcanic material can reach a temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius or 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The city of Pompeii was originally hit by falling volcanic debris, causing many to shelter in place. What caused the most deaths was the surging wave of pyroclastic flow. Mount Vesuvius resided nearly 10 kilometers or 6 miles away from Pompeii, yet the pyroclastic flow enveloped the city, frying and suffocating all still present. 
the pyroclastic flow from the Tobu eruption would have been vastly greater than Vesuvius. The exact size of this flow is not exactly known, however, even if the flora and fauna of the region did not get directly burned to a crisp by the flow, the thick fallout across North Sumatra would have suffocated and buried all life. An area nearly the size of Sicily was buried beneath a layer of ash more than 100 meters thick. The new land surface of North Sumatra experienced decades of heavy erosion due to the lack of life. The recovery took hundreds, if not thousands, of years. For months following the eruption, ash would fall all over the world. All of South Asia was covered in an ash layer about 15 centimeters or 6 inches thick. The entire Indian subcontinent was also showered with between 1 to 10 centimeters of ash depending on the region. The Arabian Peninsula received around 1 centimeter of ash while East Africa received up to 3 centimeters. Though this does not sound like a lot of ash, the geological record suggests that these areas experienced significant erosion following the event suggesting flora drastically suffered. The huge amount of ash injected high into the atmosphere would have severely limited sunlight. Estimates range from 25 to 90 percent. The impact would have been temporary but still devastating for 10 to 50 years depending on the amount of ash fall. Thick layers of volcanic ash were deposited across the Indian Ocean, South China Sea, and the Arabian Sea. Deep sea cores from the South China Sea have shown that the eruption may have been even bigger than once thought. 2,800 cubic kilometers of debris may be an underestimate. It is possible that the Toba volcano erupted as much as 13,200 cubic kilometers. Such an immense volume of ash present in the sky would have had drastic effects on the Earth's climate. In 1816, the eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia caused severe climate abnormalities that caused 1816 to be known as the year without a summer. The global temperature decreased among other climatic changes that caused crop failures and subsequent food shortages worldwide. The eruption of Tambora was minuscule compared to Toba. Scientists agree that the eruption of Toba must have had worldwide effects on the weather and climate. However, Estimates vary widely about its actual effects on the prehistoric world. Geologist Michael R. Rampino and volcanologist Stephen Self have argued in a 1993 paper that the eruption caused a brief dramatic cooling or volcanic winter which dropped the global mean surface temperature by between 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. Volcanologist Clive Oppenheimer believes that estimates of a drop in surface temperature by 3 to 5 degrees Celsius are likely too high. He suggests a drop of around 1 degree Celsius, still quite significant. In contrast, American climatologist Alan Robach used computer simulations to determine the eruption would have resulted in a maximum global cooling of 15 degrees Celsius. Evidence from Greenland ice cores indicates that the eruption roughly coincides with a drastic decrease in temperature for around a thousand years. The tree line and snow line were around 3,000 meters or 9,800 feet lower during this time, supporting a significant drop in temperature. The remains from lake cores in the United States and Italy suggest that this decrease in temperature may have already been underway. Marine isotope stages also indicate that the climate was transitioning to a glacial period regardless of the Toba event. The event likely did cause a prolonged volcanic winter, but it is unlikely that it triggered the onset of a glacial period. One of the reasons that the Toba eruption may have been less disastrous to the climate than once thought is because the ejected rock volume does not necessarily scale with ejected aerosols. Aerosols such as sulfur dioxide are what can actually change the climate. Recent evidence suggests that though Toba ejected a massive volume of rock, the aerosols were lower than expected. The eruption of Toba was undoubtedly a very traumatic event for anything living in Southeast Asia and its effects on the overall climate may have still put a significant strain on human populations. The eruption has been linked to a genetic bottleneck in human evolution which also dates to around 70,000 years ago. This had caused the development of the genetic bottleneck hypothesis. 
The idea that the Toba event caused human populations to decrease to less than 10,000 individuals. This hypothesis has largely been abandoned by the scientific community, but we shall still look into what effect the eruption had on prehistoric people. Toba erupted 74,000 years ago, which was a very interesting time in human evolution. At this time, many unique human species still walked our planet. Our species was present in much of Africa, the Middle East, and increasingly, South Asia. It is thought that during this period, significant human migrations were moving along the southern dispersal route. Evidence of modern humans in the Indian subcontinent date to nearly 80,000 years ago. It is hard to tell how many modern humans would have been in the immediate vicinity of the blast, though it is likely that they were. Neanderthals lived throughout Europe and Eurasia, while Denisovans lived across at least East Asia and perhaps much of South Asia. Populations of late surviving Homo erectus and other species lived throughout Southeast Asia. Homo floresiensis lived on the rather small island of Flores, while Homo luzonensis lived at least on the sizable island of Luzon. During this time, the sea level was far lower and much of Sundaland was exposed. This region was a cradle of diversity for early humans and there were likely other human species yet to be discovered. Modern humans had likely not reached this far east at this time, but they were quite close. Many hominins in Southeast Asia likely suffocated in the days and weeks after the blast. The massive cloud of ash blocking the sun would have caused plant die-offs around much of the world. As far as East Africa, there is evidence of significant drying and wildfires directly after the eruption. However, recent studies have shown that there is no evidence of volcanic winter conditions in East Africa after Toba. Certain areas would have been less impacted than others. Coastal resources such as shellfish are less susceptible to the effects of eruptions. On the food-rich coast of South Africa, people actually thrived during the time of the eruption. Even areas much closer to Toba actually seem to have endured the event quite effectively. The archaeological record of communities living in India suggests that they are more or less unaffected by the event. Later archaeological evidence from Sumatra itself suggests that even populations relatively close to the volcano were able to survive. Human species in colder climates seem to have been unaffected by the eruption. European Neanderthals show no obvious signs of population reduction during the Toba event. Hominins living in Southeast Asia were most likely affected much more but the survival of Homo floresiensis, Homo luzonensis, and other hominins in the region after Toba suggests they endured the event. Since the genetic bottleneck hypothesis was originally proposed in 1998, numerous studies on human genetics have not detected a bottleneck that coincides with the Toba eruption. The genetic bottleneck happened, but recent studies have detected a date of around 50,000 years ago. Malik et al. 2016 have found this bottleneck to be due to the founder effect instead of a population reduction. Overall, the hypothesis that human populations were reduced to 10,000 individuals after the Toba eruption is currently unsupported. Modern human populations during this time were around 10,000 individuals anyways. The hypothesis has unfortunately entered the public conscious, which is undeserved. Current evidence suggests that our species was actually thriving during this time. The event undoubtedly had an effect on the prehistoric world, though it may not have been as bad as once thought. I personally find it amazing that such a cataclysmic event was less disastrous than we might think. Even our ancient human relatives were able to survive through the event. It makes you wonder what would happen if a similar sized volcano would erupt today. I think it would be pretty bad and many people would starve, but overall we would probably survive just fine. Well, thanks for watching this video. Let me know if there's any other topics regarding ancient climate or ancient populations that you might want to hear. Leave a comment down below, leave a like, leave a subscribe, a share, I don't know, what else is there? Put notifications on or something. So, thank you, bye, arrivederci.